A very weird injury ridden week six is now behind us. Let's turn our attention to week seven. Let's talk five moves to make for Dynasty, you know, heading into this next week here. So with that being said, number one, go out and add Jordan Mason, right? Christian McCaffrey leaves with an oblique injury. He comes back for one play, but is in too much pain and basically is out for the rest of the game. And from that point on, we see a mixture of Jordan Mason and Elijah Mitchell. Mason gets five touches. Elijah Mitchell gets two. I think with Elijah Mitchell, one, not being fully healthy, and two, being borderline incapable of being fully healthy, Jordan Mason may get a lot of run if Christian McCaffrey actually misses time. That's going to be the big question. But by the time waivers run, we won't know that. That means Jordan Mason needs to be added just in case Christian McCaffrey misses time and probably should be the top waiver wire ad since he's available in over 50% of leagues right now. Moving over to move number two, go out and add Craig Reynolds and add Divino Zigbo. David Montgomery leaves with a shoulder injury. Jameer Gibbs has missed multiple weeks now with a hamstring injury, and they appear to be the next two backs up here. Now, I don't think either of these are star players in the making. I don't think they're hidden gems that just have slid under the radar. I truly think these are going to be volume-based RB2 plays, and hopefully one of them falls into the end zone. They're both going to be available and traditionally, we've seen Craig Reynolds kind of operate as the RB3, but Ozigbo has been up and active with Jameer Gibbs out recently, and that has allowed him to get a little bit of run as well, so much so to the point that we need to consider adding both. If I have to make a priority, it's going to be Craig Reynolds. He has the massive block on the outside yesterday that springs Amon Ross and Brown open for a touchdown. That's the type of stuff like a guy like Dan Campbell lives for. He loves those kind of hustle plays. That is going to earn Craig Reynolds more playing time over Ozigbo most likely. And then if you miss on him, I think Ozigbo is interesting, right? He, he's even then the next man up. He's the RB4, now the RB2. We need to make that a priority on our waiver wires, especially in a high-powered offense like Detroit. Before we get to move number three, guys, if you want two additional moves, right? So seven moves to make every single week, check out the DLF YouTube membership underneath that bonus content tier. You get an extension of this five moves to make video. And on top of that, you get a video just for members released every single week as well. So check that out, guys. The bonus content tier on the DLF YouTube membership. So with that being said, move number three, we have three quick waiver wire ads at the quarterback position in your Superflex League. 3A, go out and add Tyson Bajan. Uh, Justin Fields leaves with a dislocated thumb. And Bajan, you know, gets a little bit of run. Honestly, looked solid as a passer aside from what might have been the worst interception I've ever seen. Beyond that, he goes 10 of 14. He gets a designed carry as well. So he, there may be some flex appeal, some super flex appeal there should Justin Fields miss an extended period of time. 3B is going to be a one-week ad. CJ Beathard may be the starter on Thursday this week with Trevor Lawrence leaving with a knee injury. Now he's slated as day-to-day, -day, but they may opt to be cautious. They may opt to make the smart long-term play with Trevor Lawrence here, especially on a short week with them being the Thursday night game. C.J. Beathard is not a star. We know this. He has bounced around plenty. But he is capable enough. And when you throw in that he's going to be passing to Christian Kirk, Calvin Ridley, Evan Ingram, you have ETN in the backfield, he could put up QB2 numbers if you're in a pinch with bye weeks or lost Fields, Anthony Richardson, whoever else you may have lost over the last couple of weeks here. So go and scoop him up as well. And 3C, go out and add Malik Cunningham. This has nothing to do with injuries. This has to do with Mac Jones being bad. Like Mac Jones being truly, truly terrible. They elevated Malik Cunningham to the, uh, the active roster ahead of week six. And it wasn't just a normal elevation from the practice squad. He is signed to a three-year deal. He is on the full-time active roster at this point. Bailey Zappi is now the QB3 with Mac Jones struggling, with Mac Jones just not being good or athletic or smart, I think, as a football player goes at least. Malik Cunningham may get a shot in the next few weeks here. He's dynamic. He's athletic. He probably will bring a lot of rushing upside and just playmaking ability that Mac Jones doesn't have right now. And for fantasy, if he's going to run a lot, and I think that's going to be the expectation if he gets a start, well, Malik Cunningham is probably going to carry QB2 upside and maybe a little bit more if he turns out to be more than expected. Now to move number four, you should be looking to trade away Nico Collins. Now, I understand in week one, I told you to go and trade for Nico Collins. If you did that in week one, you have a player that has gained a ton of value. But since then, I think the production 
has outpaced the peripherals. He is doing more than he should be in terms of an expected fantasy points per game metric, in terms of a target share, an air yard share, all of these things. He's currently averaging 16.9 points per game. He has a target share of under 20%. A lot of this right now is propped up by a lot of passing volume in Houston. But what we're seeing with Nico Collins is he has not turned into a legitimate alpha wide receiver. He has not turned into a 25% target share guy. And I've started to see trades out there that are putting him up very, very high in their rankings. A player that has gone for a 2024 first plus in several leagues at this point. I think he will be and is a very good wide receiver too in an NFL offense. I do not think he is a one long term and we're seeing that kind of play out with how he earns targets. So if you can get a 2024 first plus back for Nico Collins, I think that's a deal worth making. This is the time to do it, right? The production, the, the hype is there take advantage. And our final move is a running back I am looking to sell. It is none other than Brian Robinson. And you may be thinking, well, Brian Robinson's 24 years old. He's averaging 14 points per game. Why would I be moving on from a guy like Brian Robinson? It just feels like he's overproducing. I mean, Brian Robinson, yes, averaging 14 points per game. That is a great number. That is what I want to see. What I don't want to see is him through the first six weeks, only scoring over 14 points once and doing so while also scoring five touchdowns 14 points per game for a guy that has scored a touchdown in five of six games is not good right if he wasn't scoring touchdowns and he was averaging 14 points per game this is a different story we, we'd be saying go buy brian robinson because the production's coming right the touchdowns will come well the touchdowns are here and he's still not doing great it's just a fact and he's still inefficient on the ground right and and we had all the talk of well he it was a gunshot victim last year. Like he was recovering and that's why he was under four yards of carry. Well, he's under four yards of carry again. And we're a year removed from him being shot, which is still insane that he's back on the field. But nonetheless, the production really hasn't changed all that much from last season. So if someone out there is looking and considering him as like a high-end RB2, I'm going to trade Brian Robinson, right? Again, I'm going to look for a 2024 first, a 2025 first. I will take that for Brian Robinson without hesitation. If you can't get that, right, and you want to maybe use him as an upgrade piece, I think that's a good idea as well. Go trade him plus picks for some struggling wide receivers that we know are talented, right? Go look at Devontae Smith. Go look at DK Metcalf, Jalen Waddell. Like, those are the types of guys I would go after because Brian Robinson, to me, is not a long-term asset. I don't think he ever, ever ascends to a top 12 running back. So to me, he's just another guy, and I'm happy to move on from him. All right, guys, that is all I have for you. Again, if you like what we are doing, if you like this type of content and you want to see more of it, check out the DLF YouTube membership. As always, guys, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.